I know you guys have been waiting and waiting and saying, hey, me, I want to hear from, you know, I want to hear from Edith, but she's here. She's here to testify. Yes, Karibu sana, Edith. <laughs> Karibu Thank sana. You. Thank you, Israel. Wow. Let me say Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Because that we don't The last time I think I, it was uh, at the praise atmosphere, but mm. I was not able to uh, talk to you. But Karibu mm. sana. Asante. How have you been? Uh, been good. Mm -hmm. I, uh, the Lord has kept me. Mm -hmm. I have remained in grace. You know, when you, you, were, you were playing that song, the one that just uh, finished, Yeah. I just posted that and I said, you know, that, that resonates with me so much Yeah. that uh, this is my testimony. Grace changed my story. That's that's amazing. Ah, nice. Yeah, so I'm starting this year. Mm -hmm. um, it's still new. Imwaka ni mpia mpaka tuseme imezeeka. Yeah. Yes. Ni mpia mpaka uko disema. Yeah, it's, you know, like how you say, yeah. reggae keeps moving until we stop. Yes. This reggae is not stopping. Yeah. It's still new. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know if I'm too much. I'm mm going -hmm. Happy New Year. I'm going to move on. Wow. Eh. Wow. Edith Warimo. Right. Where were you born? Where were you raised? Mm. Yeah. So I was born in a village mm -hmm. called Gikambura. Gikambura. But wa Gikambura oh yeah. Mhm. Nikasema hii mnasema. I know I know Gikambura I know Rudegete. Eh. I know uh, Kamango. Kawe wado kawe wade ya. When you are from uh, <laughs> No. Uh, <laughs> Kagini just say it is well. I normally say I'm a village girl. So if you're a village boy, just say I'm a tu. But when other than you, you are a village. Yeah, but that is another, my second home. Ah. It's my second home. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, it's a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. Very, very beautiful. Eh, tuko na lami mpaka inje ya nyumba. Wow. Hii. Sasa ni watu wangapi Nairobi wako na hiyo? Si wengine wako na Cabros. Yes. Hawana lami. Yes. Eh. Mm -hmm. So, we thank God. <laughs> I was born in uh, Mombasa. Mhm. Mm um the circumstances were that my mom was in a come we stay marriage mm -hmm. with my dad mm -hmm. and um that come we still did not work amen it did not work it did not work so it was not really like a marriage marriage it was no a it was a come we stay yeah uh, and um it did not work yeah. and um well from the bits and pieces i recollect it was not pretty mm -hmm. yes there was a lot of uh, <laughs> emotional abuse going on that later resulted into physical abuse at least i had i've had the story from one side i tried hearing the story from the other side but yeah. i was snobbed mm -hmm. so yeah i will stick with the side of the story i know mm -hmm. so how, how was life now my mom raising you as a well son? my mom mm -hmm. okay so vile waliachana mm -hmm. uh, my mom left mombasa came back to her parents place like my shushu's place in gikambura so while so I was a village girl and um, I was a girl in the midst of boys so I I, <laughs> I grew up with boys mm -hmm. so that's why people people see I'm I'm too tomboyish but I'm too tomboyish for life by the way yeah. <laughs> don't be don't be, don't be don't be fooled by this lipstick by the way I am <laughs> yeah <laughs> I am <laughs> I am too tomboy for life but yeah. so I grew up doing the normal stuff I you know we we used to panda miti mm -hmm. um israel have you ever have you ever played this game mm -hmm. where um, you know you are swinging on a tree kuna ile 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 kamba mtu alikuwa anafungilia side moja then ile side nyingine unafungilia kimuti hivi yeah. then unaweka katikati ya migu yes then you are you are swinging you're midair swing, yes. you hit wikaeza <laughs> katika umeisha yeah. so i did all that uh -huh. and then also sliding mm -hmm. you know kukinyesha and all that so i literally grew up like a like a village girl boy a tomboy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, went to school. I was very bright, by the way. Eh, mm -hmm. I was very, especially, especially mathematics. Yeah. Eh, that was my Mwalimu wa maths. Mwalimu wa maths. Mwalimu wa self. I know, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So, uh, upon, uh, I, I was singing while I was in uh, primary school. I used to be called Songbird. Mm. Izo times ndo nilikuwa nga mindi nilikuwa naongoza national anthem mm -hmm. Mindi nilikuwa naongoza um, a, a school anthem You know those kinds of things yeah. So I used to be called um, Swangbird mm -hmm. And then after after clearing So after clearing her, her, her uh, primary school mm -hmm. I went to a high school called Meriliki Girls It's in Lua Kabete It was an amazing school And one of the things it streamlined that school was my language because me nilikuwa nimeenda na ma you know yeah. but me really is, is is very particular <laughs> yes. on language you guys have to be speaking english throughout yeah. and it's nice english mm -hmm. it streamlined my language it made me who i am today mm -hmm. which is an amazing thing 
Yeah. And um, while I was there musically, I used to sing uh, in the praise and worship. Uh, but I think I was undecided when it comes to the matters of the faith because uh, I was I was on both sides, man. You know, I was I was a born again Christian, but I don't think I even understood what salvation was and how deep it went. You know, there was this there's just this pastor who came when I was in form one. Uh, our first uh, in a weekend challenge. Yes. Uh, so I could just preach to your hell, Joe. I can say my ati the day of god the lord is coming and 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 some people will go to hell and then he starts describing hell hell is dark hell smells like sulfur <laughs> hell sijui has worms sijui the size of what oh my gosh when i had the definition of hell it's like you know i don't want to go to hell yeah. please save me now you know <laughs> <laughs> you know where i come when i'm coming from yes. wana semanga ni kuziwa uoga Hey, bana, nilinunua. <laughs> <laughs> Kama waliuza nilinunua. <laughs> so, I I got born again, mm-hmm. but I don't think I really understood what what the depth, the depth of salvation. You know how deep salvation went. Mm-hmm. And um I continued like me I was not monolized. I have to say that. I don't think our school had mon- monolization. Nile tu kidogo kidogo and even that one I never went through it yeah. because I was a celeb man. Usiku walikuwa wanazima stima wanawasha tochi uh-huh. alafu mimi ndio huyo na mamorale huko uh-huh. usilete kombe <laughs> aki israel aki. watu wanataka ngambali mbali sana <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was me uh-huh. uh, back in high school uh-huh. uh, but i uh, on this other side i used to lead praise and worship garret and so you're um, leading praise and worship but yes. You're, you're really you're still 50 I'm struggling. No, I'm struggling with mm-hmm. the understanding. I think I just loved music. So I used to sing anything. Yeah. So it took me a long time before I understood, you know, like, you know, mm-hmm. when you, when you're born again, man, just sing one song, mm-hmm. sing songs from one side. Yeah, yeah. I, I used to sing anything. Yeah. Even Rihanna I used to sing. You know, mm-hmm. I never used to know these things. Mm-hmm. So, but in form 3, I remember I watched this movie I think for the first time. Uh, the passion of the christ yeah and i think that was the day i understood how deep the love of christ goes yeah. as far as salvation is pertained and i think i rededicated my life to jesus shortly after that and i was deeper not as deep but i was deeper now yeah. you know mm-hmm. i was not doing you know secular music for other people and all that mm-hmm. and um i cleared the uh, form four mm-hmm. in uh, 09 but let me ask you. Oh nine, okay. Watu wanajua naanza ku calculate years hapa. Mimi nasema eh edit amefikisha hii. You need to stop that, yeah? Mwachie mwalimu wa math hiyo. Mwachie huyu mwalimu wa hesabu man. But Edith, yes. I, you know you mentioned that you were raised by, by by a single mom. Yes. At some point were you ever uh, what are some of those challenges that you experienced that being raised by a single mom knowing that mm-hmm. there is uh, the other parent? I think I would say there was a lot going on um which is now where the challenges we're going to talk about the challenges that came with that Mm -hmm. but while i was in uh, primary school i had a big challenge with finances Mm -hmm. obviously um and i say obviously okay it's not obvious for everybody but for me it 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 was um it was a struggle because my mom did not have a job so her job was going to look for a job and when she found one yeah. it was probably in somebody's farm it was probably washing somebody's clothes so obviously the resources weren't too much mm-hmm. and so i would lack in very basic things yes so even even primary school you know raising the funds was was a hassle yeah um while i was in class eight mm-hmm. my mom got a unique opportunity um where there were there were some there was some uh, there was a kid who they i think they live in the uk now but at that time they were the, um, the mom i think had moved to the uk and then now was looking for a visa for the for how she can take her whole farm so her ch- her children were still here so then they had bonded very well with my mom and she felt like uh, we need they need to go there so that my mom is a nanny for this baby given she was a big girl she was like i don't know she was a big girl maybe like i don't know maybe early teens or something like that mm-hmm. so <clears throat> i i ende akue na niwake since wameshazoeana and for my mom it was an open 
conversation because it was it was good because my mom needed a job yeah so there was while i was studying all this time looking forward to going to high school my mom had been saving a little bit of money but now there was this need to uh, pay for all these official documents that allow you to travel you know inclusive of the passport you know which kama hizo so my mom used everything she had to try and get these documents and um eventually the last of her money was used in a you know the ticket the the ticket to go there but vile alienda uko wali walimnyima work visa in fact walimnyima work permit akiwa i mean not visa walimnyima work permit akiwa huku and then they were like no let's just travel um ukae tu kama tourist and then within that time we see whether they are going to give you a a, a work permit while you are now when you're now residing there yeah. maybe it will be easier when you are there mm-hmm. but it still didn't work out they still didn't, didn't give her work permit mm-hmm. so she couldn't work because it would have been illegal and given that this person had just i think relocated if she had been caught with somebody who was illegal it would also have given her problems yes so there was no risking so my mom had to come back so now that's where the problem starts and that's where even the testimony starts because she's come back she has spent everything all that money she had mm, saved for yes. me to go to high school yeah. she has spent the job has not you know mm. has not come yes and she has come back to very a very dire situation more dire than before so when i cleared class 8 I came back to a very bleak situation. The first thing is my job after clearing class eight was to help my mom cut fodder. Idara. Yeah. I know. Yes. As an employee. Yeah. So my mom would hire herself out mm-hmm. in farms yeah. to do jobs for these people and I would help. So if you would have seen my back at that time my lower back mm. at that time i was dark because of exposure to you know hot sunlight yes. during that time mm-hmm. it was unfortunate that my family was not exactly poor mm-hmm. but for some reason the lord never allowed them to become help to me and that is why i'm here to tell you israel mm-hmm. that sometimes god will withdraw people who you think can help you say i went through all this and my uncle can help yeah i went through all this and i have an auntie who can help yes they can but they aren't supposed to because there's a process they're supposed to refine you like fine wine and you must go through it for you to become what god wants you to be i kid you not i am very different from many people and then also very different even from my family yeah because of the process i went through mm-hmm. trust the process so while i was working i remember when my letter for meriliki came yeah and i brought it to my grandmother and i was very excited mm-hmm. because meriliki is a good school it's a good provincial school and um I I told my I don't know if it's provincial now it went to national but by then it was provincial you know it's those years yeah that people should not calculate we back we back we we back. we back in 20 we we, yeah, we back, we back. It, in 20 oh. <laughs> yeah don't, don't don't calculate it is not <laughs> it's, it's not right yeah <laughs> so mm-hmm. <clears throat> um when i brought that letter to my grandmother i remember the words that she said and i will never forget them yeah she said yeah it's a good school but you will know you get you will get there when you get there yeah so that was very heartbreaking for me coming from the one person i mean i had two people in my life mm. 
my mother and my grandmother so coming from her it broke my heart you know you mentioned something that is very 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 peculiar because from the people you expected help mm-hmm. they disappointed you yes and i realized this is one of the tender things that god actually wants to use when he wants to glorify himself yes that he will even put you in a uh, in a battlefield empty handed so that at least when you get that victory right you understand that this was not me <laughs> yes. this was god mm. so how was that for you because actually by that particular time you were very young I was yeah. I was very young and um all I saw was my mom's struggle mm-hmm. and I will talk about my my um my battle with bitterness and forgiveness and depression yeah because when you do not understand the process you would tend to be bitter when people do stuff that you don't expect them to you are going to end up being yoked by unforgiveness yeah. and bitterness when you do not when you're not able to understand that God has a bigger plan in that whatever you're going through is part of the plan you see the problem is <clears throat> only God knows the plan yeah he tells you he told Joseph um I'll make you great he didn't he didn't tell you the process because sometimes if he tells us the process going to be like you know what <laughs> i don't want I this i can't i don't <laughs> want this greatness thing you got <laughs> yeah <laughs> the process is too tough yeah but uh, that is where the my journey began to make me into who i am today mm. mm-hmm. i came from a family like i said i did not come from a poor family and so there were some things that i didn't know yeah i did not know lack of food i did not know lack of shelter and i did not there were just things i did not know so during that time we were aware my grandmother said you we will know that you will go to high school when you go so we said with my mom we've got to try so we hit people's fields and we worked But the problem with the system of uh, working like that mm. is you find that you save very little. You earn very little and you save very little. Yes. <clears throat> so my mom slowly she was able to buy everything that I needed to go to school. She bought the box. She bought the the the, the clothes. Moja moja tu. Moja 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 moja. It was a big struggle. But the one thing she had not been able to raise was the school fees mm. cuz it was a lot. It was 12,500 shillings and by then it sounded like a mountain. Yeah. And um on the I was supposed to go on Monday. I believe I don't know if it's Monday, Monday the 31st or the 30th. I think it's the 30th. 30th January. 2006 that was when i was supposed to 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 go to school but on sunday in the morning we still didn't have school fees so my mom at this point she's at at her end yeah. there's nothing that is more depressing than not being able to give your child yes what you feel you're obligated to so my mom left home we live um for those who know this place we we live somewhere quite some distance from gikambura and um it's in a place called nderi and the, i know the place she told you 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 are from this guy is just a no. village boy <laughs> why, why do you tell people you are from town <laughs> i'm just i'm just a boy town but i know yeah. they yeah <laughs> all right yeah. <laughs> okay so my mom walked from all the way from Um, that place yeah all the way to kikuyu miguto those days if you would have seen my mom she was so thin because from walking from there all the way to kikuyu i me israel that's nothing mimi while i was in school while i was in primary school me and my mom used to walk from nderi to dagoreti you're not serious for real kuchukua nini my mom had alikuwa hii time ninakwambia tulikuwa tuna hustle ku raise pesa ya shule yeah. just before everything was disrupted and money went yeah. my mom had started kuf, alikuwa anga amejaribu kufuga ngurue ilikuwa moja 
ikaza so ikakuwa ako na kadha mm-hmm. so tu, a, tulikuwa tunanunua damu dagoreti pale ndonyo mm. mm-hmm. and we used to walk from you know that place yes. from that place yeah. all the way to dagoreti market wow and then we would walk back with sasa amebeba damu yeah. me i i didn't know the luxury of kupanda matatu my mom walked on her shoes until zikaisha chini and unajua sasa alikuwa anadungwa na miba yeah. anavunjia ndani so my mom's legs chini zilikuwa black and i thought that was her color mm-hmm. aya unajua juzi juzi after the lord has done miracles is when i looked at her feet i was like aya miguu yako ilibadilika <laughs> i used to think my mother's legs were black <laughs> ni life <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah me I never grew up with the luxury of sijui mata and i'm coming from a place where my auntie mm-hmm. who is the sister to my mom yeah. at that time you know they had two cars mm-hmm. in the uh, household but we are struggling we don't have even 20 shillings for matatu they used to come with with their child in a in you know in in like a baby cot in the car mm-hmm. so that is why i'm saying it gets to a place and if you don't understand the process you will be bitter you will be like these people have more than enough they can help me they just want you know what i'm saying yes so <clears throat> when my mom walked that day she walked until she got to um Kikuyu. So while she was there is when she saw a car um ilikuwa imekuja Kikuyu kununua vegetables za shule mm-hmm. ni ya shule ni, ni gari ya shule and it was um from a school that probably you know the school is called Kitusuru boys yeah yeah that school belongs to my grandmother Yes, one of my grandmothers. So when I tell you I don't come from a poor family, you will understand. Yeah. You will understand why I had to struggle with bitterness and unforgiveness yeah. for a long time. And my mom entered the car. So she entered the vehicle and uh, the driver came and asked, "Who are you?" So she said, "No, I'm just a woman. I I need a lift." Why are you going? You just take me until where you're going. My mom knew exactly what she was doing but the driver doesn't so it's like you just take me until where you're going. So the driver took her until just a few meters from Kitusuru boys and told her, "Madam, you have to come out because I'm not authorized to carry unauthorized people in the vehicle." Yeah. So my mom left and said, "Thank you." And then so he went went inside the school. So my mom goes to um to the people our masolja mm-hmm. when you were kwa gate. Yeah. Akawambia I want to see the owner of the school. I want to see Mrs. Kimani. And my mom and they are like they look at this woman she's she's dirty. She her shoes are torn. She is filthy. What does she want with our director? Yeah. And my mom insists, please call for me. This woman. And finally, they call her out of, you know the woman who kept knocking? Yeah. And the judge was like, "Okay, I don't fear God, I don't fear nobody, but I'm just going to help her because she's annoying." Yeah. That was my mother. Eventually they decided to call her because she was annoying. She was a nuisance. And um Mrs. Kimani, hi. There is a person at the gate and she insists she wants to see you. What is her name? So and so. 
Oh my god, that's my niece. Let her in. So my mom goes in. And when my mom enters her office, she just falls down and cries and says, "Auntie, help me. Or my daughter will not go to school." And my grandmother told her, "Wake up. Tell me the story. What's going on?" And my grandmother told her, "Let's meet tomorrow at Sarit Center. And I'll write you the check." I think it was Standard Chartered Bank. Mhm. And my grandmother wrote the check of 12,500 shillings. And that is how I went to school, but here is here's the problem I struggled with Israel later. I was later to go through another hard process because she paid one one time. One time, yeah. But I struggled with this because I came from a family where she um she took so many children through school mm-hmm. and she sponsored so many orphans mm-hmm. but i was a child who came from her lineage and i struggled with that as a young child i asked myself why go and look for orphans when your own is struggling with school fees i can imagine it didn't make sense to me The only day it made sense to me is the day I understood the process. I had to go through the process. So even the people who were able to couldn't. And after the first fee was paid, my mom had to secure um me in such a way that she wanted to know that the next um term is paid so she took a calf that she owned and she sold it and she brought the money to school now my grandmother um for some reason was very unhappy by whatever happened so she took everything um she could grab you know everything that belongs to my mom yeah. it was raining on that day mm-hmm. as she narrates and she threw it outside on the mud my goodness and she told her get out of my home your own daughter yeah the process Where? you know you ask me how does how does uh, how does uh, my grandmother do that to her own daughter I will ask you how do Joseph's brothers take the young brother oh my, and yeah. sell him off mm-hmm. the process the process is difficult when god wants to crush you until the wine comes out it is difficult it will not make sense the blueprint will not make sense you just got to trust god and when my mom was kicked out of home She walked. She was used to walking mm. anyway. So she walked all the way to Dagoretti. Yeah. And um, she found a place and she started It's okay. We'll be and uh, she started sleeping on cartons. Yeah. she would sleep on sacks mind you i came from a home where we had a mansion but the process is difficult yeah how about we do this <laughs> how about we do this let's just take a very short break even as we thinking we'll be coming back in a short while don't touch that uh, we are pearl radio uh, but in just about a minute uh, I just want you just to uh share uh according to how the holy spirit is giving the strength to narrate this how you know how how you you managed to get through that particular situation because it was very very painful it was yeah but um it wasn't easy to get over it yeah i had to first and foremost learn to survive before i learned to thrive in it yeah 
Well, my mom came to pick me up from school. Yeah. Well, something that I missed, which is very important, is yeah. while she was on the streets, she got picked up by a daughter of God. A woman I'll never forget. Um, and uh, her name is Alice. And she housed us. She gave us the the room. She was not a, a, a rich woman. She was a very needy woman. But um, she gave us a room. Ile nye mtu iwake alikuwa metahiria. It was a very small room. It only had a bed. Mm-hmm. And it only had a meza. So that is where I was for the next four years. In a slum. And a very tiny you know what was the best thing about being there is that I had no entertainment I didn't have TV or <laughs> radio <laughs> like listening to you right now I yeah. didn't have all that that was luxury yeah I only had pesetas storybooks novels that's why I'm a reader mm-hmm. and um, the Bible and my books and that brought out the best in me because it it brought out two things one it made me read like crazy because i would see my mom struggle by that time my mom started selling panties she was given a you no know, she was able to raise a little money and started selling panties yeah. so she would tell me if you don't work hard in school you will finish school and come start selling panties with me <laughs> is that what you want and i would <laughs> I would read like crazy. <laughs> so that was the first thing. Yeah. The second thing is my storytelling. It came from that place. Now that we didn't have a radio, we didn't have a TV, what I will do because I had to fit. When we went back to high school, I couldn't be the kid who didn't know movies and didn't know songs and yeah. you know. So I had to on the day of opening I would listen to all the people's stories, all the movies they had watched, everything that they had watched. Yeah. And then after that, I would reenact it and it would be me. If I told you that movie, mm. if you were told it wasn't me who watched it, mm-mm. <laughs> so that's where my storytelling <laughs> came from. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you manage now to, because that was the first instance, how, how were you managing to you know paying the school fees for those four years even to go to campus even. well when you hear me say i am god's investment it's not even a joke when you hear me say you cannot touch me because there is god who backs me up and he would deal with you very seriously i'm not even joking yeah when i was in form two third term at that time my bills had accumulated for almost almost the whole year I hadn't paid school fees my principal and I want to thank her so much she knows herself madam rosemary waiganjo my principal then would always find a way of not sending me home and it's not like I was a bright student i just gained favor with this woman in uh, on f- in form 1 we had another another principal called madame kaho but she left so rosemary weganjo was new and she was really trying to make sure that i am not sent home but the bills kept piling yeah and at some point she's accountable to the bog Bo- she's accountable to uh, is it BOD board of directors yes. and she's also accountable to the PTA mm-hmm. so obviously it gets to a place where you know bills are too much and that child needs to go home and at that time my mom was working as a as a house help in one of my grandmother's homes so she's lit she was a doctor and i remember when i was sent home it's not like these people didn't have money to, mm. you know what i'm saying yeah well, my testimony is very weird because you're surrounded by people who can do stuff but god says no there's a process so when i was sent home i came home 
and when my mom saw me she just went i knew how she was she would pre- pretend she's strong then she would go and cry her eyes out so she cried and she asked god now lord this is the end mm. how do we even raise i think it was 22000 at that point how do we even raise 22000 Let me tell you. It was when I came home never to go back to school again that God comes. When you hear that your end is the beginning of God. Yeah. It is literal in its meaning. Mm-hmm. A scholarship she had been following with a church called Nairobi Baptists. Mhm. The one in Valley Road, um, in the office of Pastor Elizabeth Mangeli. So that was when Nairobi Baptist called her and said, yeah. "We are glad to inform you." And this was several days after mm-hmm. that Edith has been picked as one of the students we're going to be educating. Wow! You know what grade I had when they picked me? C minus. What? So it had nothing to do with a grade. <laughs> It's not like I was a nice student at that point. I'm so stressed, I'm yeah. so depressed that I have become an, a, a C minus student. Yeah, until uh, unless okay, I think I understand this because of how things transpired. Yeah. But at least she was a, was a, was, a, was an understandable grade. No, you have to understand where I was coming from. Yeah. And I told you I was a bright kid. Yeah. So when we were talking C minus we are talking very low grades mm. so they picked me up and mimi nimesomeshwa na tithe na offerings where yeah. hizi watu wana, wana pushiwa watoe yeah, hizi hizo that's why wow. i tell you i'm god's investment wow in every in every way mm. and when my mom alichukuliwa sasa when i knew when my mind was free mm of the fact that you know that my mom was not raising school fees anymore i was able to study but even then nilikuwa na ujinga you know easy easy nini easy easy processes that i had gone through yeah. they made me want to make my mom's life better even when i didn't have the opportunity even when i didn't have the money to so what how would i do that Mimi Israel my mom used to give me um 250 shillings when I was going to school she would take me to Kikuyu pay for my buffet which was 50 shillings to Kingero then I would walk to school and then um she would give me 250 shillings mm-hmm. 50 shillings was to come back home and 200 shillings was my pocket money for half a term. So let me tell you how God provided. It happens. It happened that uh, and this is not a very nice story. I don't know. I've never given it. <laughs> It's not a very nice story. Yeah. But there was um there was a teacher in our school in when I was in school who was not very nice because he wanted to take advantage of some girls. And we were five of us and I was one of them. That's a story I've never given in world. And um as a result of um that because it was a serious allegation. It was taken to TSC in Baza Plaza. And so the five of us would have to go to Baza Plaza every now and again to testify. Yeah. And we when we went there we had to be provided for for the per diem of the day. So the per diem mm-hmm. for the day was 300. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that is how God provided for my mm-hmm. pocket money. Yeah. I don't know if you're understanding. Yeah. It is in the nastiest of situations. <laughs> It's a very nasty situation. Yeah. 
and I'm sorry but that teacher was dismissed eventually by TSC mm-hmm. and he left the school but uh, you understand how God can work even yeah. through very nasty very ugly situations yeah and how you managed to, uh, to com- through that you managed to complete high school yes but I have to tell you another story mm-hmm. before we leave there yeah now I never liked asking my mom for provisions mm-hmm. because I knew sasa ninaitisha vitu atoe wapi pesa yeah so when I was in form 3 Um sasa mechukuliwa na Nairobi Baptist us zikaisha chini. Mm-hmm. So I said okay. What do I do? So they kept ishering until I couldn't wear them anymore. So this is a story that my mom doesn't know. So I went into the incinerator. Yeah. <clears throat> and I picked some um some shoes that had been thrown away. They were butter shoes but they had been thrown away by somebody who did not want them. And I said, "Oh, this person is foolish." Mm-hmm. But kumbe that person had thrown them away because chini ya kukuwa na kitu. Ilikuwa ilikuwa yani ilikuwa inaonekana yani the heel was good, it was strong, yeah. but kumbe ime crack. You know how butter shoes can crack like yeah. this? Yeah. Kumbe that was the reason that person had thrown them away. Mm-hmm. So mimi it is nikazichukua and I made them my shoes. So oh. now when I w- <laughs> So now when I would enter the the toilet yeah the water would seep in oh, And I didn't know how dangerous that was until I started getting very serious fungal infection and because it was very painful it started by being very itchy and then it became very painful to the point I felt like my feet were on fire So every night I would walk out of class go open the tap and place my foot under the tap so that that running water can cool me down and at some point i would cry i would cry in pain but when i got but when i got back when i would go back to class i would put on a brave face and continue reading and one day when i had gone to cool my feet The teacher on duty finds me there. Her name is Dr. Mwangi today. By then she was Miss Mwangi. And she tells me, "You girl, what are you doing there?" And I just break down. By the way, that was the first day I ever broke down to anyone. Mm-hmm. I had been strong all these years, but for that day I just broke down. Yeah. And she discovers this is not even a girl like discipline this is now a girl like fast comfort yeah. then i find out what's happening yeah and that is when she took me to her house she was living within the school took me to her house and i showed her my feet i didn't even need to tell her anything i showed her my feet they were white as snow looked like i had leprosy and she told me what's going on and i told her how my shoes finished how i went to the incinerator and picked shoes and she told me he said that your mother cannot afford it or she cannot mm-hmm. don't even tell her she cannot yeah so that teacher did something i always remember she gave me a new pair of slippers mm-hmm. butter mm-hmm. and she also bought me a new pair of shoes that I found her with it when yeah. after I came back because mm-hmm. she had to look for me an immediate leave out for me to go and be treated Israel while I was being treated those feet later on is when I found out that I would have been amputated wow had that spread up it was because urea is serious and the dirt that is in that those washrooms are serious yeah so I had it took it my mom spent a lot of money treating me and she would have just spent 200 bob to take some shoes them to yeah so no no ujinga ujinga wow but that 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 must have been very 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 painful it was crazy but now with all that challenge yeah you know edith to listen after kupitia hiyo you still have to continue it's the process you pick your mat yes and you have to go yes now did you manage to uh to complete school and also uh get into campus yeah mm-hmm. what I did completed. you pursue 
um, applied statistics. Mm-hmm. Yes, ah, you mentioned it. Yes, mm. mm-hmm. I finished. Mm. I wanted to pursue music. Yeah, I knew I was gifted in music, but my mom told me music is a co-curricular activity. <laughs> you sing when you're in the bathroom. Yeah. And you sing when you're doing other things. Yeah. It is not a career. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to change. Yeah. And I had to take my second love, which was mathematics. You remember I told you I was very good in math. Yeah. So I had to take my second love, which was mathematics. Mm-hmm. So I just went and I did my undergrad a BSc applied study. I was very nonchalant about it. I wasn't excited about it. Mm-hmm. I also my mom was like, I can be one of Mama Fulani. When she does CPA, she will not lack a job. So my mom told me, now you need to do CPAs. So when I was doing the undergrad, I was also doing CPAs. Yeah. This was easy now. When I was in campus, it was easy for several reasons. Number one, now I'm a young adult. And uh, when Tukimaliza, tuki, tuki, tuki wa, tukimaliza campus to Kifunga, I would come and look for those two promo jobs. You know mm-hmm. those promo jobs? Yeah, Zile's are sales and marketing. Yeah, and they yeah. pay well. Mm-hmm. You know they pay per day. Yeah, but for us to look out na lipo na commission. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a bad did it. Me unge ni pata meneng. Wahabari zenu, my name is so and so and I'm selling this product and today we have an offer. <laughs> uh, by the way, I always say this wherever I go because it is something people need to be educated about. Yeah. There's a mama mm-hmm. who came with her son in ile kamindi ko kikuyu ilo. Mhm. And um vile aliingia kapata I was like how are you madam I don't even know if I don't remember what I was selling at that point. I was selling so many things I don't remember. I have sold fish, I've mm-hmm. sold roiko, korogosho huko. Mm-hmm. I have sold soap, I have sold oil Name it. Anything I have sold. Many more do I know. So this this woman, she comes. Yeah. And she finds me there, and I'm like, oh, how are you? My mm. name is so and so, and you know we are trained to smile and do yeah. whatever. And this lady, you know, backs off from me like I have plague. And then she looks at her son and tells her, "You see why I tell you to work hard in school <laughs> so that you're not like this people." <laughs> <laughs> Aki and I am just I am earning to take myself through campus. Oh my. And my mom was also a big part of campus because now at that point God would go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that lady wherever she is I uh, forgiven you. I could do na hustle to kujitafutia. Okay. You know ha, when when you when you you are pursuing your CPA, you yes. know. Me, I also have I have a sibling who is actually pursu- I actually pursued CPA. Yes. And I know in Mambo ya mathematics, yeah. Mambo ya mathematics. Yeah. But also the on this other side, mm-hmm. you also have this calling. Yes. How are you how were you managing to balance the two? And at what point it reached for you to say that you know what I'm going to be a full-time minister? It's not easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> All right. So, no I I I honored my mother. Mm-hmm. I did my undergrad mm-hmm. and I did my CPAs and I finished them. And then I brought her the degree and we took the photos and she was very happy. She was very excited. And then for some years I went into corporate. I worked with some organizations. Mm-hmm. I don't want to mention them, but they're a bit big. I worked with both national and international organization. When I was finishing, I was at an international organization as a junior financial analyst i was going to learn and then you know it was a very lean team so it was just in financial analysis uh, accounts receivables was just me and my boss so i knew that uh, this is what i am pursuing mm-hmm. but while i was there when i entered that company because that international company was my last working place yeah the day I entered that company, the Lord spoke to me and told me, you are here very briefly. Ah, so me, I said, okay, very briefly means <clears throat> the Lord must have better companies for me. Yeah. So I hate the, the <laughs> applying. Yeah. And by the way, I need to tell you, Israel, before music yeah. made, you know, like I, I made it in music. On the year that I was working with that company because i worked with them for almost two years i worked with them for about 18 months um 18 months plus three 21 months 
so i was only short of 24 months by like 3 months yeah so so what happened mm-hmm. in that year that i was there yeah i fasted once a week for a whole year mm-hmm. i was trusting god mm-hmm. lord take me to my place of assignment yeah take me to the place where i need to be mm-hmm. And God told me you are not here for a long time. Mm-hmm. So I said, ah. I started applying for other jobs. This bigger jobs now. You know the who's the what. But nothing opened up. And I know God is not a man that, you know, he doesn't lie. He doesn't change his mind. So I was very discouraged at my workplace. And it showed even in the manner that, you know, my performance. Ordinarily I'm a, I'm a passionate performer. Yeah. And if I lose passion, I'm not a performer at all. I'm the kind of person Israel if I if I am not passionate about stuff even if you give me money, money is never enough motivation for something I'm not passionate about. Yeah. So during that time COVID came. So when COVID came, we were told by the organization, now we are going to be working from home because there's the social distance thing blah 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 so now we started working from home so i would wake up it was very easy. i would wake up change the shirt <laughs> so I'm, i have a blouse here yeah i have pajamas here <laughs> those who know me know i love being comfortable so yeah i would just happen to your office the office koko pingine who could change the pajamas So I worked like that for almost a year. But then during that time bado naskia sasa mood imeisha kabisa. Like yeah. I don't have passion for what I'm doing. And I'm wondering why because it's my love. Remember yeah. mathematics is my second love. Mm-hmm. So in 2020 all churches were closed. And I had I was I'm a preacher. Mm-hmm. So I'd been preaching since 2016 because I cleared campus in 015. Mm-hmm. So from 2016 I was doing a lot of high school ministry, preaching and all that. But at this time everything was closed. So there's nothing I could do. Yeah. But I had this one invitation where I was asked to go and preach in a youth service mm-hmm. online. I was like how does that work? No, you come in front of a camera, then we record you, then on that Sunday we stream it live. Oh, okay. So I went. Mm-hmm. It was at PCA Motoini. Oh, Motoini. Yeah, yeah you know Motoini. Yes. So that was that was the presbytery week, the, the I think I don't know presbytery or parish week, yeah. the youth week. So I went and I preached. After preaching, we went to the vestry. Vest, the vestry is is the office where um, you know all the ministers who are serving normally meet after mm-hmm. the service is mm-hmm. over. So while we were there we were just sharing you guys how has covid affected you blah 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 and they were like you know some of us have lost jobs it was a very delicate moment because people had lost hope so we've lost jobs some of them were working at quarter pay some of them were working at half pay it was bad you remember it was it was a yeah. it was quite a challenging situation and we were like okay what can we do to give people hope and we were like okay the only thing we have is music okay why don't we come and be recording some music and um we just you know take it out to people mm-hmm. and then when when the day when you're streaming the service after the service is done you post the songs and it encourages and those who we are going for songs that would actually encourage people so now we said okay ah that sounds like a good idea so why don't we do this why don't we meet next time on this time okay we came Well, let me tell you. So, we were all singing. All of us had to do at least one song. So that was the day I took the microphone and the song that came to my mind is a Kikuyu song called I am Han. So I just took the microphone and said, "Nido kakiyo ine kiriyaru." And I just started singing, but I didn't know the lyrics. So, the person who was recording was like, "That song is sweet. Mm, can you Can you nini can you google the lyrics mm-hmm. I was like okay so tutaimba na 
simu we imba tu imba tu sauti ndio watu wanataka imba mm-hmm. so i held i held the phone so nido kaki go ile kere you know that song yeah i am hana mwanzan i am a tiowe kotoni take i cannot sing apparently yeah no, you you can you are trying maybe i can rap anyways that is a... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i posted it mm. we posted it on the page ya church So we were like mm. Lord give us 10,000 people to listen to this song. Yani all we wanted was 10,000. Mm-hmm. Oh ye of little faith. The day that song came out in an hour it had 7,000. What? I's like Facebook is lying. Oh. <laughs> so at the end of that day Unaona imepostiwa saa 8 ya mchana. Mm-hmm. At the end of that day it had 30,000 people. Wow. And when you look at the comments, who is this girl? Who is this? Where has she been? Who is this girl? What church is that? By the morning of the next day, mm-hmm. it had 85,000 views. Me I've never seen that. Me 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 they did me. Mm-hmm. So tunapigiana simu. Wewe oh, unaona? Mm-hmm. Aki hii ni jokes. <laughs> you know like we <laughs> we are not understanding what's going on. Yeah. So one day I'm not known the very next day I'm on people's WhatsApp statuses. Wow. So <laughs> something yes. And you know I am still this kachile I don't have money to back up the name. So mm. I'm in a matatu and somebody's playing on the status so I'm like I'm not very good with nini <laughs> by the Israeli you know. I'm not very good with <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with being a noticed mm-hmm. so I'm like Lord hide me. They should not know it's me. They should not know it's me, you know. Yeah. But that is how God used the simplest thing to blow it out of proportion. I started seeing influencers picking it up, posting it, saying, "Oh my god, which which church is this?" I started seeing people looking for that church and they started bringing gifts to the church. Wow. You know when a baby is born, mm. when a king is born. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wise men have to bring gifts. Yes. So the church was given Sijui a laptop. Sijui Sijui changed Sijui the, the whatever. So people are now interested in this church. We want to make this church beautiful because of us. All right. So while we were there, I asked God, so what do I do with this? This newly found fame, what do I do? And God tells me, don't worry, I'm going to make a way. But this is the time. Be prepared. So one day I receive a call. Mm-hmm. And this call is by somebody called John Masha. So he tells me, "Hi Edith. My name is John Masha and I'm a producer of Southgate Records and there's this song I had written. And I've already even produced the video. But the more I want to release it, the more God tells me is not mine." So while I was asking him who needs to sing it, I was led to your videos and I said this girl needs to do it. Mm-hmm. So I want you to pray over it and see if it is something you can do. So for me it was weird singing a song that somebody else had written. Yeah. I'd never done that. I thought I was a good songwriter. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I was wrong I was and how God has trained me but I prayed about it for two weeks and God told me go. I said I go. Go. All right. So after two weeks I called him back and I told him I've decided I'm going to do it. So I went. And he told me now the only condition is eh uh, I want you to allow me we will put it on our page. Mm-hmm. Because we are trying to grow as a brand and uh, we would like to put it on our page. Yeah. And asked God, okay, what do we do here? And he said, no, the pitch doesn't matter. I will make you a household name just sing it okay so that same day we made a deal is the day we recorded mm-hmm. we did the audio in one day video in one day one day you know what that song was yeah nida gutogeria kai nida gutafaya kai Wengai wangai shode mudama kimonene 
Dago thathaya Dako nyiheria Let me tell you That song came out That song hit media Yes It went It went It went People don't even know it's not on my page But it went Edith became a name Kale kaschana kagai wagai shio yeah <laughs> wow it went 1 million 2 million 3 million 4 million 5 million 6 million i'm like okay th- there are this num- there are this many people in kenya mm-hmm. <laughs> you know and especially in our language yeah now during that time mm-hmm. i was still doing covers and then there came an uproar so people were like, this girl, she's gifted musically, but she only sings other people's songs. You remember even Gaiwa Gaisha that was written by somebody else? Yeah. So I was coined. I was shamed. I'm a big name, technically. But I'm being scorned and shamed. Being told, ah, yeah, she's a good vocalist, but... Yeah, she sings other people's songs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that took me down. I was, I was, when that happened, I was in, in 21 days of prayer and fasting. Yeah. And I remember I was, I was hit deep and I asked God, Lord, would you please give me my own song? Teach me to write. Because now through this, I discovered I'm not a good songwriter. Yeah. So I discovered I needed help. Mm-hmm. So I asked God, can you please teach me to write songs? Mm-hmm. Because I'm discovering I'm not very good. Then as the months were going, it doesn't happen the same day. You have to wait on God. One day, I am, I am doing some farming. I'm a farmer. And God tells me, I, know I want to give you a song. It was, I think, the first Kikuyu song that I did that, you know, did that well. And God told me, now write. And I started writing. You know what that song was? Mm-hmm. Okay, hinga morango. No, kihingora. Oh, hingora ga niwendo. Ne dagi shoki agado, ne morango wa hingorire, morango ni jatsareire, na morango wa hingire. Wow. So when God gave me that song, He told me, "I want you to sing that song with urgency." I didn't know why. Mm-hmm. I didn't even have the money. Remember, I'm a big name yeah. with nothing, <laughs> and also with a lot of scorn. Mm-hmm. So I went and I recorded it. When I recorded it, when I brought it to my mom, my mom listened to it and told me, can you play to me that song? Can you play for me that song again? Mm-hmm. Can you play it again? So she had me replay for her like 10 times, then told me, now can you send it to my WhatsApp so that I can play it to Niki Lima? I was like, mom, it's a demo. to me at Uvileiko. The second person I, I played was my friend. She's mm-hmm. called Pauline. You've yeah. seen her in my videos and all that. So I played for Pauline. Pauline cried, started. I want to just say song So she was, So I played for three people. Yeah. So the third person is an unnamed person. I will not mention. Yeah. But when I when I when I played for for this person, mm-hmm. Kwanza this time now the video had already been done. Ali watch Kwanza Kulia. So I'm wondering why are people crying? Yeah. <laughs> and my mom told me the song would be big. Mm-hmm. So when the song came out, yeah. <laughs> I'm seeing testimonies. People are just crying. Hey guy. Aki, you have needed me. Now the biggest testimony for this song was when a woman spoke to me she called me and she told me edith Mm -hmm. i have held bitterness against god for so many years yeah because i got sick i got cancer of the womb and my womb had to be removed Mm 
and the only thing i'd ever wanted was to get children mm. and i've held bitterness that has stripped me of my wealth it stripped me of my joy it's left me bare for so many years but through the song you have released mm. today i have been healed wow me i just fell down and i told god what is this you are doing me i don't know if i can handle it and the journey starts wow and and you talk about this music and i can relate but there is this specific song that even my listeners they usually request this song and right we wanted to know the story behind it like as in where where even because i think actually you have only five minutes before we conclude <laughs> <laughs> i don't know where time uh, time is you mend our people but I anyways know. Yes. I want to I just wanted to share because also I you know this is also part of your testimony. Yeah. The song Nitasimama. What really happened? It's not something I can talk in the 5 minutes. But in a nutshell, I went through you know you when you think you have been broken before. Mm. And you realize in God there's another level of breaking. 2023 13 days after saying happy new year and prophesying into the year and making resolutions my world became black i went through rejection that i have never gone through in my life i went through pain like i have never gone through in my life and as a result of this pain and shame and rejection I went into hiding because this is the only thing I could do I couldn't even face people I couldn't face myself I went into hiding and I stayed in the house for 10 months so in 10 months God broke me to levels I never thought I could be broken I cried I asked him to avenge me. But God told me no. This is for my glory. This is not for death. It's for my glory. I had to forgive people who if I if I was asked in honest opinion, I would want to see God avenging me in their presence. Yeah. And God told me, I want you to forgive them and I want you to love them. was hard people who had slandered me people who had spoken lies about me something i'd built for five years crumbled in a day i was in total shame I was, it it was crazy mm. and i was broke <laughs> because of this i was everything i lost everything in a day and it was during this 10 months that i discovered oh you can cash a loan from night till morning and for 10 months i cried and called on the name of god until god gave me ministry to start ministering to the people who are in my plot now i would lay my hands on people and things would change but my situation was not changed mm-hmm. people were receiving miracles as a result of the fact that i was there but me my situation was not changing but after the season was over god told me now your season is over because you have overcome you remember in in scripture in the book of revelation says to him who has overcome yeah it says because you have overcome i will give you a gift i will give you a song and that is the song nitasimama wow it is not a very simple song and even when you listen to it from the depths of your spirit you will realize it's not even a, no- a normal song mm-hmm. it was given to me by the spirit of god yeah in a very deep dimension probably i'm not able to give the details about the testimony because it's deep as far as wide yeah But what I can tell people is mm-hmm. moments before I released that song God told me 
I want you to do two things. I want you to dedicate this song to me. Because as Christians, we are used to releasing songs we have not dedicated. And yet satanic people will not de- will not release songs before they are dedicated demonically. Mm. Second thing he told me, I want you to give me the glory of this song. I told him, Lord, you take the glory. I don't want it. He said, no, 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 no. I don't want you to give me the glory when it's here. I want to give you to give me the glory now. I want to own the song now. And I, for the for the for the next thirty minutes before the song came out, the song premiered. For thirty minutes until the song premiered, I was laying flat on my carpet, telling God, "Take over the song, take over the glory. I don't want it. It's not mine. Do with it what you please." So when I hear the people of God being blessed by this song, I know mm, it's not mine. <laughs> It's God. I have no glory. Wow. It is actually, time is really much spent. <laughs> and I think we have a lot to cover up. I wish I we I wish we could do this again. <laughs> we come for a part 2. We come for a part 2. But uh Edith. Yes. Um I think this is very 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 important because a lot of people kuna watu will come and text and be hey or muulize he. So I I have to make sure I ask this particular question. Okay. Uh, someone was asking is Edith Werimo married ama kuna mtu ama kuna mchele ama yeah wow <laughs> <laughs> all right so i think the best way to put it is this mm-hmm. Edith Werimo is not married mm-hmm. but Edith Werimo is in a season of healing. Okay. So that means that it's not yet time. Yeah. So I'm talking about mimi daktari. We were talking about daktari. My daktari. Oh, keep away from them. Oh. But when it is time. Yeah. When God has done what only he can do. Yeah. And the healing is complete. Yeah. Edith Wairimo has been promised a wonderful son of God. Amen. To be her dear future husband. Yes. This woman has been hurt. Amen. But I thank God mm. that she has remained in the hands of Jesus. Yeah. I believe when the time is right. Yeah. The Lord is going to make it happen. In his time. Mm. Mm. in his time <laughs> anyways Edith, uh, <laughs> before we before we just let you go yes. i know we've gone past our time but i just wanted to yes to to share uh where can guys find you on social media all right. and also i want you just to speak one word a parting shot because i've talked a lot of things yeah <laughs> but yes a parting shot even as we conclude <laughs> so my social media handles yeah find me on facebook my page is edith Werimo kenya and um, Instagram is also Edith Werimo Kenya. TikTok is Edith Werimo KE. I have an X account, mm-hmm. but I barely go there. I don't even know how to operate that thing. I need a teacher. Yeah, we are here. We are <laughs> You're here. here. You can give me teach call. me these things. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So this is my parting shot. Mm-hmm. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 40. That forget the past things. Forget you've gone through a lot. I'm talking to the listener. You've gone through a lot. Mm. And your life, just the way you are standing, it can only be grace. Yeah. It doesn't even make sense how you're still standing. But the word I feel in my spirit is forget what has happened in the past. Because God is doing a new thing. And I promise you the definition of new in God's standard has nothing old. Anything you have a recollection of as old I promise you is not going to be there. It's going to be completely new. It's going to be wonderful. So hold on and don't stop believing. Yeah. Because it's going to happen. Amen. Amen. 